the acceleration due to gravity. When a model ignoring air resistance is used, all objects falling freely under gravity fall with the same constant acceleration that is g meters per second squared. This varies over the surface of the earth. In our lessons, it is assumed that all situations occur in a place where it is 10 meters per second squared. The value 9.8 meters per second squared is also used. Sometimes very common this one, 9.8 meters per second squared. Most answers are given correct to three significant figures so that you can check your working. Let's take an example, question number 2.3.1. A coin is dropped from rest at the top of a building of height 12 meters. 12 meter high building. A coin is dropped and travels in a straight line with constant acceleration 10 meters per second squared. So acceleration is downward 10 meters per second squared. Find the time it takes to reach the ground and the speed of impact. Solution. So let's uh, draw a simple figure. So this is a picture of what's happening. So it's a building of 12 meters high. You drop a coin. It comes down. At the beginning, there is no speed. Velocity of the coin is zero meters per second. And the downward acceleration is positive. A is equal to plus 10. So it's coming down at an acceleration of 10 meters per second squared. And when it travels an arbitrary distance s, we can have this point here. So we can write equation for s, assuming that initial displacement is zero. So suppose the time taken to reach the ground is t seconds using SI units. U is initial initial velocity is zero, acceleration downward a is equal to plus 10, and s equal to 12. S is the distance travel from the top to bottom, 12 meters. And we assume this is the initial condition that means s0 or initial uh, displacement is 0. So therefore if you use an equation with u, a, s and t. So since we don't know uh, the values of uh, 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 final velocity v, we don't know. Therefore what we know is initial velocity, acceleration, distance is given and the time is what we want to find. So therefore, we can use s equal to ut plus half a t squared. Sometimes, some, some, sometimes we use this one s equal to s0 plus ut plus half a t squared. But s0 is the initial displacement which is 0. So we can omit that one. So we can use s equal to ut plus half a t squared. So s is the distance travel. u is the initial velocity. Half a is the acceleration which is positive when you put, apply it in the downward direction. t squared is the time squared. So you take the time squared in one side and simplify t squared equal to 2.4 and when you take the root square root of that we can find the time uh, is 1.55 to 3 significant figures. So you normally take the positive value because of the time. So it's a square root of 2.4 you might see plus or minus 2 point uh, plus or minus 1.55 what we use plus value correct. Huh? So then to find the velocity so that is the time it takes from uh, top to bottom to reach the down here. So then we need uh, also they ask to find the velocity, find the time it takes to reach the ground and the speed of impact. What is the speed of impact when it reaches the ground? So we can use two equations. Either you can use the V equal to U plus F A T or you can use to find the velocity V, a formula involving S, U, A and V also can be used. Either you can use v equal to u plus a t or v squared equal to u squared plus 2 a s. So here again the v is the value that we want to find. u is the initial velocity, 2 a is the acceleration which is downward positive 10 and s is the displacement 10 from the bottom it, 12, it travels 12 meters. Therefore the right hand side is 12 times uh, 20 is 240 v squared is 240 taking square root again we get the positive value of the square root of 240 uh, v is equal to 15.5 to three significant figures so that means the coin takes 1.55 seconds we found it earlier to reach the ground and has speed of 15.5 meters per second when it reaches the ground so this is by using v squared equal to u squared plus 2 f a s equation 
if we had used v equal to u plus a t again v is the uh, final velocity u is zero a is the acceleration 10 t is the time that we found earlier 1.55 times 10 will also become 15.5 but sometimes safe side you can use an independent equation so in case you have made a mistake here uh, it will not reflect in the final uh, answer of the second question so you can see the summary is that the formula for motion with constant acceleration are v equal to u plus a t s equal to u t plus half a t squared or s equal to u plus v divided by 2 times t and v squared t equal to u squared plus 2 a s these equations this information can be found in uh, this uh, book cambridge international is an a level mathematics by sophie Holdy, series editor uh, roger cohes is a uh, publication by other education thank you very much